now we have an AFG going into a VCA with an LFO controlling the VCA. We're looking at it in the uh, two trace mode. So the one trace is red, the other trace is green. And this is the up and down two trace mode. When we look at it in the levels mode, you can see that the channel on the right is the uh, LFO and as it's ramping up the uh, output of the VCA is changing in, in strength. Now if we go into the VU in peak mode, the, the two bars on the left side are the VU meter, the two bars on the right side are the peak. The, the left one of each pair is the channel 1 input, the right one of each pair is the channel 2 input. So the left one of each pair is showing the audio as it's increasing in strength. The uh, second bar is responding to the, the sudden change of the ramp as it resets. It's creating a, a sort of a, a click sound. Um, so when seen by the VU or the peak meter, that's a, a very loud click sound, so it pulses there momentarily. Now if we speed up the LFO, or slow it down, And we have a couple of different level settings in the VU peak uh, modes. Right now it's set for the plus minus 5 volt signals being zero VU and being at the same level on the peak meter. If we go to the audio uh, plus 4 dBU, you would see that the signal we're feeding in is considered very strong for line level audio which it should be, it's, it's a plus minus 5 volt signal, so it's a fair amount stronger than audio. In the 2.5 volt uh, mode, it's again stronger than um, the zero point for either of these. So you can use it as a reference as to how strong the signal is that you're feeding in. If you're feeding in a modulation signal that's plus minus 2.5 versus feeding in a an audio signal that's plus minus five or feeding in a line level signal which is going to be down about three volts. As the modulation starts going a lot faster the averaging of the meters makes it so that you don't really see much fluctuation in the level settings of the meter. This is the spectrum analyzer mode. I'm still working on this, but you can see the way that it currently stands. Uh, the scale, it, the box on the left is showing channel 1, the box on the right is showing channel 2. The, um, right now it's at the 20 kilohertz scale, so the right end of each box is 20 kilohertz. I have an AFG going in that's cranked up all the way, and you can see the spikes are in the middle of the boxes, which means the AFG is at around 10 kilohertz. Uh, so I'm going to change the scale from the 20 kilohertz scale down to the 10 kilohertz scale. So now those spikes are at the, the high end of that scale. And as I turn the frequency down, you can see them moving. Now the difference between what's in the left and in the right right now is the first channel has a sine wave, the second channel has a triangle wave. So you can see that there's a little bit of the harmonics are showing in the right shape. If I change that channel 2 to be a sawtooth, now you can see a lot more harmonics. And if I change it to a square wave, you can see that the harmonics are different. Now it's got 
alternating harmonics. It has the odd harmonics. So as I change the frequency, you can see those harmonics go up and down along with the fundamental. And we can go to a slower and slower settings depending on the frequency that you're working with. And again, that's the square wave in the second channel. That's the sawtooth in the second channel. That's the triangle wave in the second channel. Okay, now we have two sine waves running in from two dope fur standard VCOs. Uh, they're both running at about 500 hertz. If I fine tune one versus the other, which is not easy on these oscillators, you can get them almost exactly the same frequency, just slightly different. Uh, the sound on the speakers is just the two of them going into a mixer so you can hear the, the slow beat um, try, which you can use to, uh, to try and tune them to get them to, to match. Now if you'll notice at the top of each waveform there's a little spike that's an artifact of these oscillators in the sine wave. You'll, you'll see why I'm pointing that out in a minute. We're going to, first these are the two on the oscilloscope. These are the two sine waves on the levels and you can see the shading of the sign here more so than on the other one because the shape of this sign is a different shape than on the AFG. This is the XY mode. Now you notice the little spikes that are moving around the shape those are the spikes that I pointed out at the top of the sine waves. So if there's something in the sine wave, some distortion, that will change the shape in an XY display. Now we'll just play with the frequency here a little bit. Now the XY mode has uh, several different time periods. It's sampling the, uh, the inputs for a certain period of time and then putting up the shape created by them. So depending on the amount of time that you allow it to sample, you might get a partial waveform or you might get a, a um, shading that looks like multiple waveforms because of the amount, the frequency of the oscillators versus the amount of sampling time, we're only seeing part of that circle. But when we slow it down, so now it's sampling twice as long, or five times as long, now we see the, the full shape. But if we keep going, now we're seeing multiple shapes on top of each other, creating a kind of a shading. Now this is with the, si the two sine waves. If I change those to two triangle waves, you can see the shape change. You'll also notice that the spike is a, a bit bigger. which you can see on the oscilloscope. 